a little bit of background, or do you want to do you want to do you want to start? You can give me the background. Okay, <laughs> exactly. And so it's, it's basically for the benefit of everybody else here, and that uh, um, the the exercise is that uh, we installed the bicycle lanes uh, there in October of 2017. And in, in order to do that, we uh, had to remove the on-street parking on that block that you live on. Uh, and um, and so in, 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 uh, in removing that on-street parking, we, we replaced it with the on-street bicycle lanes. And so you made a presentation to council a few months after, maybe almost a year afterwards, because of some delays in the process. And, uh, and so you asked for us to consider removing the bicycle lanes so that you could get some on-street parking back uh, in front of your, your, your home there. And uh, so I wrote a report and I, I explained to the, to the politicians why we don't want to get rid of the bicycle lanes uh, and explained some justifications. Uh, but uh, you know, to your credit, you came to that committee meeting this past Monday and furthered your case as well and just made sure that you impressed upon them uh, the justification and, and you know the grief that you're feeling on the situation and so the suggestion was for you to come here tonight and see get get the read this crowd as well this group of cyclists and so we know that it might be a little bit uh, uh sort of a lopsided in, 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 in that uh, you're coming here with your grief and of course the people at this table are our pretty strong interest in cycling so we get that and and we are sure that there will be a high level of respect at this table uh, but uh, this is a, an opportunity for this group to hear things a little bit more. So if you want to add anything to that or make sure. Sure, I'll, I'll start. I mean, I rode a bike all my life, so I know what it's like to ride a bike, but with bike lanes or without bike lanes, if people are gonna drive dangerously or carelessly, doesn't matter if you're in your bike lane, you're still gonna get into an accident. And like every other block along Bay Street has at least one lane of parking. Now, the block between Barton and Tiffany is more narrow, so they can't put the parking, so they had to take the parking out. Now, I I mean, I would like a solution where it's a win-win for both the cyclists and the residents. Now, in, in order to, all, all I was presenting as a solution was that one link, that one block between Tiffany and Barton be a hybrid. Like, I don't know, I don't see any traffic going through in the daytime except for rush hours. And I mean, most people that I talk to that are avid cyclists, they'll go out to Highway 50, uh, 50 they'll go out to Stony Creek, they'll go along the highways. They're not going to go up and down Bay Street all day long riding their bicycles. So, I mean, it, I would like to see a solution where they do it in Stony Creek, they do it in Ancaster. Like for this one block, it's only between Barton and Tiffany, and it's not like overnight. It's so not, you mean between Barton and Stewart? I mean Barton and Stewart. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's it, it's not like it's going to be all day long. I mean, if I got to check in on an elder person, where do I park? There's no parking. They're putting up, uh, when they put up the Wilton Lofts, that took away all the most of the parking that was on the street around the corners. Now everybody's assuming that people can just park four blocks away and everybody is able to walk or is not disabled. So the other the other point is, um, you know, it, it's only one block. It's not like it's going to be disruptive to using all the bike lanes, and it's a win-win for the cyclists. And the residents that have been there, I've been there 25 years, and I depend on being able to park. If I have to check in on my neighbor, I can stop. If I have to unload groceries, if I have to get deliveries, if you have to get somebody to pick you up with darts or uh, something, where are you going to go park? Three blocks away? I had to get a roof done. I had to get uh, almost apply for special permits. Uh, if you want to get your ducks clean, they have to park the, the vehicle in front of your house. They can't just say, well, we're going to park three blocks away and go run a, a, a hose to clean your ducks. So, I mean, I understand what it's like to be a bike, bike uh, ride a bike. I've been riding a bike all my life, and I'm all for it. But what I'm saying is, is because of the consideration that it's too narrow on that street to leave a bike uh, parking lane, like they've done all along Bay Street, there's, there's parking. There's one, at minimum, one lane of parking. 
and here there's no parking. So now they have a project that's going on on uh, Stewart and McNabb. They have another uh, condo series that's probably going to happen on uh, Stewart and Bay. And where are you going to have this parking? Uh, like, we just want to be able to stop, drop off our groceries, pick up our groceries, check on the elders, uh, unload load your car. It's not like I'm asking that I want to park the car there all day long. I mean, during the rush hours when people are riding their bikes back and forth to work, okay, nobody, it's a bike lane. Any other time, why can't people have like a, a short-term parking? I mean, I don't know if it's ever done anywhere else, but like we're, we're in Hamilton, let's take the initiative to have a win-win for everyone. And you know, taking away the parking and not, uh, I, I, I don't know, like I've talked to lawyers and I've talked to real estate agents and they, they say the same thing. Not everybody wants bike lanes. Some people prefer parking. So how, how, do you, how do you make everybody happy? And it's only one block. It's not going to be the whole, the whole uh, Bay Street. So I mean, it, it, it's a solution. I, I, unless somebody has a better solution. Any questions, Anne? Um, if you're a roofer, can you get a permit to park? Yeah, the city, we, we, we took this roof report as an opportunity to just get, get right. some of that information out there. Is oh, that, okay. So we, we flagged that, that there is a mechanism that uh, if you do need to block a bicycle lane in the sense of doing something like that, we there there is a permit process that you apply for this permit and you literally can block a bicycle lane for the purpose of this kind of thing if you don't have a driveway or whatever in the sense of getting that vehicle off of the street. And it's justified in the sense of cycling accommodations as well as we don't want these people to try and be doing things and running hoses across active bicycle lanes or having workers go to and from a vehicle into a house or, you know, wheeling messy piles of stoves of shingles and nails across bicycle lanes. So we see it, it better. It's better to temporarily compromise the bicycle lane for those kinds of more messy um, operations. So we do have that mechanism to shut down the bicycle lane for those kinds of activities, but that doesn't address what you're getting at, those more incidental things like groceries. Um, if I can just add one more comment to that. Um, this winter, the, I guess they must have separate contractors that do the bike lanes and separate contractors that do the roads. Those Bay Street bike lanes were done before the roads were done when the snow fell. And People were parking on those bike lanes. There's tons of people that have told me, well, we see it, but we don't call it in. And it's happening. People are actually parking in them. And in the wintertime, they're either dumping snow in them or they're parking in them. So, I mean, it's already happening. It's been happening. It happened all winter long. And it, it would be nice if we can come up with a solution where everybody wins. Like, I'm all for the bike lanes. But if they're not being used, how am I supposed to stop off and check in on an elder? Am I supposed to, you're assuming that I can walk four blocks? Like everybody's assuming, oh yeah, there's parking three blocks away. So is everybody capable of, of walking three blocks? Do you live there or are you just stopping in? I, I have several houses in that neighborhood. Okay. So I have the basement and I have a 200 foot backyard there. So I, um, I, I put a lot of my material, I stay there when I need to stay there. And other times I use it uh, for doing my maintenance on my other properties. And I've been doing that for 25 years. And I'm probably the only one that went to the committee adjustments to get the zero green space. I paid for a lot of the permits and everything. And I've been using this continuously. And now, you know, you wake up one day and there's bike lanes, and you're not allowed to park there. Yeah. I guess my concern is that if you start taking away the bike lanes, the city We're really not lacks connectivity to begin with, and that's part of the reason why the bike lane isn't as utilized as it should be, is because you get to a certain point and the bike lane just disappears, similar to driving down the 401 and the highway just disappears. It's well, not a, an ideal situation. So. If you start taking away the lanes, it's even less incentive for people to use their bikes as opposed to more incentive. 
and you're forcing people into an unsafe situation. Every time a bicyclist or a cyclist has to go out into the traffic, then it's causing an unsafe situation. So the question is, if it is a bike lane, then it isn't a bike lane, then it is a bike lane, it's, it creates an unsafe situation. I understand where you're coming from, and that's a good point, but like I said, I, I, I rode a bike all my life, and it's not the cyclists you gotta worry about, it, it, it's the cars. That's, that's and why and what I'm saying is, lane. it's only one lane. It's not a dedicated uh, share road. It it's only going to be off peak hours. And I've talked to so many cyclists, and they tell me they don't ride their bikes up and down Bay Street all day long. Okay, you know what? I'm one of them that does. I commute there. Okay. So for over 35 years, I've traveled down Bay Street because one of my other passions is sailing. I've been a volunteer, a coach, worked with kids down at the harbor there. Uh, but more recently, my son and daughter have a house on Park Street, and I am the dog walker. So five days a week, I go down to just right by where you live, actually. And usually three of those days, I ride my bike. But what I can say over the past 35 years is the increased traffic on Bay Street uh, the park is more popular. People go to the park now. There are trucks pulling boats. There are cars pulling boats. I was actually asking Daryl to make it safer for the cyclists. Could we actually have a green box when you turn into Bayfront Park? Um, it is part of a connected network that leads us to the go, and hopefully someday in the future we're going to have all day go. Um, it's We're going to have more traffic with the condos you're talking about and even the waterfront development. So studies show that cars and bikes, when they're separated, everyone's happier. The car drivers are happier and the cyclists are happier. So, but it is unfortunate that it's at one block. So I don't know what we do about that, but well, someone I mean, who actually commutes and I'm going up and down there and well, I, I like having my own space. And now with my grandson, um, I want to be able to get in the bike lane there and go to the park. I, I understand that. Now, from people that, my relative's been in that area since the 40s, and I own several houses in the ward. Okay, now, from what I understood was, I said, why, why can't they go down another street where it's not as narrow, and they can still have one lane of parking, and from what I'm being told is, well, the bike people, it's not desirable, they have to have a continuous path. Now, if you're riding a bike, uh, that's great. Now, I I ride a car. I have to pay for a safety. I have to pay for uh, a license. I have to pay for insurance. I have to pay for a uh, sticker. I have to pay for so many other things. And now, because I'm a, a taxpayer on several properties, is that fair to me that you strip my parking away and you, ca you can't come up with a solution? Like, why can't we have this lane of bikes that's dedicated to bikes on a different road. Why does it have to be a continuous path? So who owns the space actually in front? Like who is it? As, city? As, as in city right of way. It's yeah, city like the city right of way is from behind the sidewalk on both sides oh, okay. of the street, of course, so it's, and, the, so it's and the roadway property. itself. Yeah. yeah. And so and, it's, it's public space. And so as and as the city right of way, the, the city makes estate. decisions. Mm -hmm. The city makes decisions as to how to utilize that right of way mm -hmm. but as a city it, it becomes this loop is like you know the city makes the decision but the the, the staff re report to the politicians politicians respond to the citizenry and you know so it, it becomes that loop so you know even though it, it's city staff uh, you know working on a solution of some sort there, there is a loop that always takes you back to the citizens and hear their concerns and and how to work and find that balance as, as mr puzo was saying as well as find the balance between what the local residents might desire versus what the city-wide connectivity issues might be. Mr. Puso, have you thought of asking the city to do permit parking in your area? My daughter lives on Ontario Street and they had a lot of people that would park in front of their houses because there was no parking for them. The neighbors all got together and they went to City Hall and they asked that it be permit parking only and everybody in that area bought a permit and no one else is allowed to park on that street. And Sharon, Jason Farr, I was at a meeting, I'm going to say about four months ago, and Jason Farr was talking about the new condo developments. And he was saying to the neighbors that, yes, like he will help them get permit parking. 
And so Murray Street, um, I never have difficulty parking on Murray Street unless it's Friday and it's the Rapid Move Cove Club. That's the big day for them. But Monday to Thursday, I have never had an issue if I'm in my car parking on Murray. Mm -hmm. Could there be permit parking on Murray? There's one house that leases on Murray, the corner of Murray and Park. It's a church that has turned into a oh, music yeah. studio. They have a parking space. Mm -hmm. They have extra people parking there. Um, I don't know. I think, to me, the solution would be permit parking maybe on Murray. And you're assuming that I, I got to get maintenance done at my house. They're going to go park at on uh, Murray, and they're going to bring everything over. Uh, deliveries. Can we get a pick? Can they get a permit? Deliveries are going to be done. W where are the deliveries going to be done? If somebody has to deliver, if you have to get out of a darts uh, vehicle, if you have to check in on somebody, and you're assuming that those people can walk one or two blocks. I think darts mm -hmm. have a right to use the bike lane, don't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. Darts. Well, <laughs> just, yeah. And, and then hold on, there was a hand yeah. up before you as well. You, you I think you was our Jeff before me. Okay, okay. 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 You want, okay. There are many streets where we have two lanes and it's two-way traffic. There is no on-street parking, but they make deliveries. They stop on one of those lanes. And that's what I'm asking for is, is a short-term... No, no. What I'm saying is you have a lane. There is a car lane, you can stop in it. Just they do a normal, just as they do in a normal two-way street. There's nothing different in that regard. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? No. You have a darts track, you have a darts bus. I live in a street where there's two lanes, one each direction. I have a darts bus comes along, he stops in that lane. There's now one lane for people going both ways. That happens all the time. So what happens? basically what happened, just to complete that thought, is the tra any traffic, uh, car traffic, would basically have to yield and wait for a gap in opposing traffic and literally do a lane change. And that would be, you know, regardless whether the vehicle would be stopped in a bicycle lane or in the driving lane, as you were su suggesting, is the widths there are so tight that any car would have have to veer across so the yellow line regardless in order to maneuver around. Given that we've put the yellow line now in the smack dab in the middle of the street instead of before it used to be offset with the on-street parking on Is that not going to create any uh, extra accidents of people coming in at each other head on? It's it's a maneuverable <clears throat> requirement. And what happens when I have to get my furnace vents and all my ducts clean? They're well, going to park the truck. And in that's the back to that issue that I mentioned before in that scenario that there is that process to get a permit to block the street for the, for the purpose of the two hours required for some kind of longer term maintenance. Uh, I, I understand that, but I've been doing this condition slate for 25 years. Now, if I try to sell the house, it's going to affect my value. It's going to depreciate my value because not everybody wants a bike lane. Most people that I've talked to and most real estate agents and lawyers that I've talked to told me that not everybody desires a pool. Not everybody desires a bike lane. So not everybody desires a parking spot. So you, you, you are correct, but, but I need you to understand that as cyclists, we are not sucking off the city. I also am a taxpayer. I also am a driver. I also pay road taxes and I own five properties in the city. So you and I are on par when it comes to that type of thing. Uh, I guess what I resent hearing is that, you know, cyclists don't contribute to the economy or to the city, I think. Probably the majority of people in this room also own cars and are also drivers and cyclists, but they commute as well. A lot of people use their bike rather than their car when they can. I know when I worked downtown Hamilton, I worked on the road, but one day a week when I commuted into my office, I used my bike. So I'm paying for those things as well. But my daughter just bought a house in the city of Hamilton and there is no on street parking on either side of the street. So again, there are many roads where that doesn't exist. And I appreciate that a permit can be made for you for those special situations, but to take away a bike lane to clean a furnace every two or three years. It, it's not taking excessive. the bike lane away, it's... Well, it is because if people are parking there, there is no bike lane. <clears throat> and so um, I'm, I'm wanting to wrap this up because we've been having the conversation quite a length. There, I, I, you, you wanted to make a point, wrap this up. 
Yeah. Um, so I was just curious what the because uh, I was going to say actually when it comes to the parking on on in the actual lane temporarily because um, there was a mention of the, the having to yield right. Um, so I mean I've seen some examples of that type of design in uh, like the Netherlands and stuff. I was curious if the population of vehicle traffic justifies something like uh, a winner or some sort of uh, design that has um, like a one and a half lane design. Things are shared just that much more. <coughs> yeah. uh, well, the re and my answer to that is I don't think so for this section of Bay Street and that Bay Street through there, it's a collector street, it's a primary corridor from the north end through to the downtown area. So it's, it's, it's a more uh, thoroughfare-ish street than say McNabb or, or some of the other parallel streets along there. So it, it is a little, just a little bit more of a, a critical motor traffic connection. And that in that in itself is further justification for the bicycle lanes because we know it's the through street connection. And so that's why the bicycle lanes are planned for Bay Street and exist there now. Uh, as opposed to as, po as opposed to the other streets, and further that, in that same argument is Bay Street is the one that has that connectivity, and uh, and even more of a connectivity for bicycles now than it does for cars, with it being a two-way corridor for bicycles through the whole of the lower city, whereas for cars it, it it's a one-way <coughs> street for for a significant length. If, uh, last comment, and then we'll wrap this up. I just want to say a lot of these properties in the north north end were selling for in the twenty thousand dollar range. 30 years ago, and now they're selling for a million dollars. So this intensification that's cutting back on elbow room, and I, I experience it myself, because they want to build an apartment tower next door, and they want to add 100 more cars to the street, and take away the abundant parking that I have. But the fact is, it's making a lot of us wealthy, in terms of, in terms of or there's a huge windfall of net worth happening. And if I own three properties in the North End, I'd be happy uh, with, with where the valuations have gone, because of the intensification. So, so just to wrap this up then, uh, one of the points that I don't think has been made very clearly tonight here is, so Mr. Puzo was suggesting that you know, in, the, in the removal of the bicycle lanes, is there a scenario that maybe the, the cars and bicycles could go single file in a critical section to create some on-street parking? So, you know, so he's trying to put it out in, in that breadth of, of scenarios and options to be creative in, in the solutions. But on the other side of it, you have heard that the conversations in the sense of the justification of having that defined facility for bicycles. And I think that's what we heard around this table today, that there was quite a few few people making that point of the, the value and importance of having those dedicated bicycle lanes, but also recognizing the grief that it is giving you in your loss of on-street parking. Well, well, I mean, the, the words you used were continuous. Now, if there's not enough room for both, can we not just route that around and come back to the park? Like there's McDab Street, there's James Street, there's Caroline Street, there's Hess Street, Park, there's Queen well, Street, yeah. and if the city, when they looked at the planning, they knew that the width wasn't wide enough and they just decided to yank the parking without consultation from me and six of my neighbors. So why can't they just, I, I know it's not the most desirable solution, but why can't they just route it around and that would resolve everybody's problem because those other streets are wider enough that they can have one lane of parking and they can have the bike lanes. So, okay. so Cora's going to have the last word. I just have one, one small suggestion is if we could, if you made that, that section um, and clearly signed it as a no stopping zone between rush hour times, that, mean, that sort of implies that you would have permission to stop in the active lane as you might need it to get your groceries into the house. <coughs> Right, and how about uh, with the maintenance and deliveries, like when people well, come... The, the long-term stopping, like two hours for the... Yeah, I, I'm not looking for long-term, I'm looking for, for short-term. I don't want it overnight, because I know people are not going to move the car first thing in the morning, and it would kind of uh, uh, defeat the purpose. What I'm trying to do is come up with a solution that's a win-win for everybody. Like, we got to be a, a, take a little bit of initiative and think of... You know, like, I know what it's like to ride a bike. I used to ride my bike to work down Burlington Street for half an hour with trucks, transport trucks, potholes, and everything. And, I mean, there's no way that nobody that rides a bike says, well, I can't ride on the road. I need a dedicated bike lane. 
Well, okay, I'd, 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 I'd like to, I'd like to, no, no, I'd like, I'd really like to wrap it up now. We've been having this conversation up for quite a while. So I thank you very much. I, and I just want to stop it here as well because I want Mr. Puzo to have the last word at this table. He, he came here, so I think that that's a, that's a fair arrangement for it. So I thank you very much for being here. Well, thank uh, so you I've, for made, I've, I've taken some notes. And so I've been directed that I must uh, f have one follow-up report back to Public Works Committee. And so the comments that I've heard around the table here have helped me in, in the preparation of that. So I thank you all, and I thank you all for having such constructive comments on this. So, so thank you very much for, for it. Thank you very much, Puzo, for, for Mr. Puzo, for coming out tonight. Thank you for having me. Okay, wonderful. Thanks. Okay, moving along, we're going to go to 6.6, .6, which is...